Hey guys, I'm The Fierce, and today you are watching my first ever Let's Build a House in The Sims 4! I don't know what that was all about. I'm just experimenting at this point of time. I was sort of creating like a simple structure and experimenting with ideas. Um, you can sort of see I'm adding those wall elements and I start adding these columns and I really liked the way they looked so I thought I'll incorporate that into my design. You'll sort of see how it evolves. This is so like what you see now, it changes so much by the end of the video. Some elements are still there and you'll notice that. I'm just sort of looking at different things like windows and stuff, trying to work out how I can incorporate it. Anyway, so just to give you a little bit of background knowledge, I have quite a lot of background knowledge, architectural knowledge. I actually do have a lot of architectural knowledge because I've studied architecture for six years, which sounds crazy. I have a undergraduate in architecture and a master's in architecture. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it's interesting though, because ever since I started studying architecture, it's sort of changed the way I played The Sims because when I was younger and I would design houses, I'd just be really creative and design things that sort of popped into my head. But then when I sort of started studying architecture, it changed the way in which I would approach things because I started looking at other things that I'd have never really noticed before, like the, the direction in which the sun enters the side and wind and all of those sort of things, things like circulation and stuff like that, the way people move throughout the build and the structure. Anyway, so I'm sort of experimenting with the column still. And at the moment, you can sort of see, I'm just trying to work out if I do stick with a simple form like this, how could I do the roof? And I was like, could I do the curved corners? And I don't know, I was experimenting quite a bit and I had a few different ideas. Originally, I had a, I do have the book. Where did I put the book? It's next to my bed. It's a book of floor plans of houses by a famous architect called Lee Cabuzier. And I was looking at sort of floor plans of his to sort of see if I could find inspiration. It's taken inspiration to start with, but then it's changed so much that it looks nothing like any of his houses. The initial ideas and concepts were sort of inspired by his, which were really cool. But anyway, you can sort of see now I've sort of added staircases on because I thought it'd be really cool to have like a, a garden upstairs, a rooftop garden. That's what I was sort of experimenting with. But I didn't really like that I had to build essentially a whole room up the top. So like to enclose the stairs. I think if I did, and I might try this in the next house building video, I might try and add a second story, but you access it from the exterior of the house. That way I don't have to have this giant chunky thing on the roof because I didn't really like how it looked. Now at the moment, this house isn't, literally where it's going to stay on the side. I just sort of started building and I figured I would move it and there you go, I just did it then. I sort of was looking and I sort of, I wanted to utilise, because this side is in Windenburg and you can see the road and where it enters the, the sort of, where it builds up to the side of the property. It's sort of like a weird situation. So yeah, you can see I scrapped the roof idea. I did not like that. It was ugly. Anyhow, experimenting with curved roofs at the moment. And the reason I decided to do that was there's a famous gallery. I think it's in Europe, but I may be wrong. And it's by a famous architect, but it slipped my mind. I was sort of looking at doing a curved roof like that because I thought it would work and stuff, but I didn't end up liking it, so I scrapped it. And now this is when the build sort of takes a dramatic change in relation to its floor plan. And you can sort of see, I'm actually designing it on a 4x4 four four grid. And so that small rectangle you can see at the moment, that is actually, you can see, yeah, there's, it's two 4x4 four four squares next to each other. And I sort of wanted to have three of those elements. It was, so it, you can see shortly it will create a lightning bolt sort of form, but I didn't really like how that looked. I figured for my first Let's Build, considering I've studied architecture, it had to have some sort of architectural merit. And at the moment, it does not. <laughs> but it does towards the end, I feel. Anyhow, I was sort of experimenting. I put those columns back in. I was looking at it and trying to work out the best sort of approach and stuff like that. I don't know. I didn't... I just... I think I spent so much time on this building trying to work out and make it look good. Now, you can see there I've sort of chucked windows in between the columns. And I really liked the way that sort of created a really unique element to the structure. Because it sort of broke up those sort of things and added something that was... I don't know, it's nothing. It's not something I've seen people do in um, Let's Build and houses that I've downloaded from the gallery before, but I don't know, it may have been done, but if anything, I thought it looked really effective. Now, I've designed that horrible lightning bolt shape. I didn't even realise, but you can see I pulled it out again. So I'm sort of just experimenting, and this is when I actually break up the, the house into a grid sort of formation. And that was something I was taught to me by one of my tutors. He always said to me, if you're ever having trouble designing something, sort of get grid paper and sort of each square is worth four by four, so it's like four meters by four meters. He was one of my, he was a good tutor, I like that guy. 
Anyway, yeah, so I think I broke it up to try and find something. And then for some reason now I've dived in like, let's add a kitchen to this ugly box that I've created so far. <laughs> but yeah, no, I was experimenting with different kitchen ideas and I didn't want this to be a massive house. It is only for one sim. I'm not sure the price though. I don't think I've grabbed that. I'll, I'll add it in the comments or something. I don't know. But yeah, I'm just experimenting with kitchens and stuff. And this was something I spent quite a bit of time on. I spend time now and then I come back to it later on and I sort of... I wanted the house to have quite a modern feel, and these cabinets do, but it's sort of a, I don't know if you could say a kitchen is hipster? I don't know what you'd call it, but it sort of looks quite hipster, and that's sort of rustic? No, I don't know what the, I don't know what the look is. I'm not an interior designer, but I like interior design. But I'm not, I don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I was just experimenting. I think I could do interior design as well, but I'm not trained in that area. But yeah, but anyway, I was fiddling with the kitchen. I spent a really long time with it. I really like these. These are probably my favourite countertops in The Sims 4 at the moment. I wish they would add some more countertops though, because I feel I spent ages and half of them look all the same, but maybe that's just kitchens in general. So you can sort of see, I'm just experimenting with how the kitchen sort of layout would work. I do come back to this, like I said just before, so... Uh, it sort of changes, it changes and it changes back, and you'll see I delete stuff and then put it back and then delete stuff again. And I'm just putting the fire alarm in now above the fridge. But yeah, I was experimenting with mirrors as well. I was thinking of mirrored splashback, but yeah, and then plants. Something that I noticed people were doing in some Let's Builds were, see those wall-mounted cabinets? People were putting them to the top of the roof, and I didn't feel that realistically that wouldn't work. You would have them, obviously, just to a certain height. So that's why they are where they are, and I've put little windows in above there. Now, the brick material that I've added to the exterior of the house, I really liked that because it gave it sort of a modern yet rustic feel. And I do end up keeping that, so you'll see that throughout the build. Now, I'm sort of experimenting with layout again and sort of working it out. It does stay... I think I changed the floor plan slight, uh, quite a bit shortly. I was trying to work out how it would work. And this is when, because I was trying to work out all the rooms, and I'm like, I need a bedroom. And so this is when I added that extra room. So that room that I just added, that's going to essentially turn into the bedroom, I think it was. Yeah, the bedroom. Anyway, it looks like a rocket ship. I think I was looking at it, I'm like, there's no architectural merit here. And then I think, what happens next? You can sort of see, it has a sort of, you can start to see some sort of, un not really that unique. I was looking at it, I remember I was staring at the design at the time when I was building it, and I'm like, what can I do? And I think there's a moment where I put the walls up, and as soon as I put the walls up and look at the exterior of the house just in its form itself, I sort of realise, hey, I can build it like that. But yeah, there's two different ways you can approach design. You can either do it form over function or function over form. So form over function is essentially you design the exterior of the build and then you place all the guts in it, so like the rooms and stuff like that. And then function over form is you design all the rooms and you sort of build the, the structure in response to that. And yeah, you can see here I was experimenting with columns and sort of adding like a little arch there, but I don't know, I didn't feel it fitted to the style of house that I was trying to create. Anyway, you will see the moment when I look at the exterior of the house and then I realise I can do this. So now I'm just adding some windows onto the house and I was sort of experimenting. I really loved the use of these windows. They came in Spa Day, so if you want to download this, I did use a few things from lots of different packs, so you might need a lot of them. But yeah, I really liked those windows. Spa Day did come with some really cool windows and stuff like that, which I quite liked. So you can see I'm sort of experimenting there, adding in more windows. And I quite liked how the windows essentially worked because I used those really thin windows where the bathrooms were as well. So you can see I've added the roof here and I was experimenting once again. I liked the idea of using the, the dance floors from Get Together as skylights and I was sort of looking at how they could be incorporated. I really didn't like how they were looking. You can see I've sort of taken those the wall columns and I've made them for long and I added the dance floors above to sort of create skylights. And I quite liked how that looked, but it just, the house, it still has no architectural merit. I've lowered the roofs there as well so you could like let some light in. You can see I go and curve the roofs again. It's quite interesting what I did now. I spent so much time trying to work out the exterior form. I think in this build I did do a lot more form over function. But I do feel that in the end, the form does reflect the internals quite a lot. Now, I, I decided to get rid of the dance floors. I didn't like how they were looking. And I was sort of experimenting with different roof types. Now, I sort of do like a sloped roof and then I sort of round it to see if that works a little bit better. And I do actually mirror that. So you can see, yeah, I do it now. And I sort of round it up to sort of see. 
And I, I actually didn't mind that roof, but I didn't feel it fitted. I was sort of experimenting with the rounded roof, but I didn't really like it. And then I made them a little bit high to add in skylights, but I still didn't feel like it was doing much. And then I was sort of experimenting there, and it just sort of made them overlap weird. And I'm like, it looks ugly. Ugly house. I built this around over three or four days, so I spent quite a bit of time on it. So you can see I'm using the a half wall there just to sort of add like an edge to the house and that's when I completely scrap it. And this is when I was looking at the build and I'm like, hey, you know what would actually make this look a lot better? I'll grab one of the walls and I start to see architecture in it about now of how I can make it look, give the, the building a little bit more architectural merit. So I'm sort of experimenting there. I'm getting rid of elements and you'll see it very shortly. This is when... This is when it sort of, I really like how it started to turn out. Looking at the house now, one of the things I possibly would change is add like a wider awning around it, but I don't mind it. Now I use the half walls to essentially create that, that, that sort of effect that the dance walls had before. And I was looking at it and I really liked how this turned out. But one thing I didn't like was, yes, there's that little bit that I just drew then and I didn't like how it was sort of going... Yeah, this bit that I'm working on now. So I got rid of that and I thought, I'll put a tree through there. And I was experimenting with different trees. End up choosing bamboo. And I remember at this point when I was experimenting with these pine trees, my brother was like, are you putting a pine tree in there? He's like, that wouldn't be very safe. And I'm like, it's the Sims. It doesn't need to be safe. But no, I end up scrapping the pine tree. And I, yes, here's the bamboo. And I quite liked how the bamboo turned out. Now the Sim in which I had in this house, I want them to be sort of like, a garden enthusiast so that's why I sort of spent a little bit of time in sort of incorporating garden elements into its sort of design slightly not heaps but these sort of things like what I'm doing now so yes yeah, so I'm just experimenting with sand and stuff like that those little things that I'm adding on like the the, the changing the color and stuff in relation to architecture ornament and elements that have been added to a build aren't essentially required to be there so they're just sort of aesthetics Ornament is more found, I guess, on things like Notre Dame. It has a lot of ornamental elements which sort of give it a grandness. Here you go. Here I'm back in that, that kitchen trying to work out how I wanted to sort of let it sort of flow and work together. I was experimenting with all the kitchen benches. In one of my other houses that I haven't recorded, I have a really nice kitchen and I uploaded it to the gallery. I bring in that kitchen and I start grabbing colours and stuff from it. I'm just sort of working on the entry foyer. And I've used a large half wall there to sort of separate the spaces. Anyway, so I'm just sort of experimenting with doors and stuff and windows positioning and all that sort of jazz. I really liked how the build was sort of coming together at this point. It was really quite nice, the form it had taken and stuff. Just changing the colours. I really liked the sort of the use of the dark timber with the rustic brick. I thought that looked really good. And I really loved how the those back elements with those pillars and the sort of the windows, I felt that sort of gave it a quite a unique effect. It sort of gave the, the building quite a unique grandness. That that would be a wish image. So a wish image is so, for example, you watch like a Coca-Cola ad and you see people drinking Coke and they're essentially having fun and that sort of thing is a wish image because it portrays something in a particular manner. You can see I tried to add in that rooftop thing but I just really didn't like the height. So I'm just sort of fiddling with columns and stuff, trying to work out if it looked any good but the height of it just didn't work for the build. I felt keeping it just sort of one level made it look the best. I added this element in because I was looking at the build and I'm like, that needs to be supported because that's not very realistic. So I ended up adding one of those wall elements in there because I felt that it sort of gave the build a little bit more strength. And I actually, I was trying to find a particular floor tile. One of my favourite YouTube channels is The Sim Supplier and I love watching his videos. And he was using a tile, that's the one I just found it then. And I wanted to incorporate it in this because I really liked it. And then I found it, I'm like, yes. I actually raised the, the house up just like a step. And I really liked that because it sort of gave it a nice height. At this point, I was really loving how the sort of the buildings form had sort of come together and stuff like that. And just experimenting with colouring and all of that sort of jazz. Now see there, I sort of deleted, I'm deleting that wall element where the bamboo is. And I didn't know if I liked it or not, but in the end I kept it. Now I add these little sand areas around here and I felt it gave it quite a nice touch to the back here. So we're back inside in the kitchen and you can see, oh. This kitchen, it was the death of me. Those two rooms that you can see, two by two rooms, there's two of them. That's essentially um, the bathroom and the reason, the toilet. So I'll come back to that and I'll explain a little bit more why I've designed it the way I did. Now I'm just doing the sort of the entry foyer and I'm just trying to pick a rug. Anyway, sort of still working on that kitchen, adding in just some random little bits and pieces to make it look more realistic. 
I really liked that that chair. That chair that I placed on the floor there, I don't end up keeping it in the house. That clear chair, that actually is like the one I'm sitting on at the moment when I film this. You can hear it, see? That's the plastic back. Now I sort of fiddle and I spend so much time trying to work out and in a minute it will be when I jump into the gallery. Yep, there you go. I've plonked that room in and that's the room I created for one of my other houses and I'm like, I'm gonna steal that kitchen. So I'm fiddling again with these columns and I end up scrapping some of the columns. I think I keep those those ones. Started sort of chucking in things inside. I really like that timber floor. It looks quite nice. You can see I'm grabbing the shelving and I really liked how I did that in the other house and it took me a while so I ended up bringing it across. And there's just some little ornamental things that I sort of brought across as well and I end up grabbing some pictures and stuff. There we go, I changed the colour of the kitchen again, yet again. I think that was the last time, I don't think I changed it again. I was trying to put the microwave in the corner but it didn't fit there with the fridge very well and I'm like, nope, I'm not doing it, not doing it. I'm chucking in the bookshelf. I was really glad with how this space turned out. So you can sort of see that archway there, that goes into the dining area and there is a fireplace in there. And I felt that it sort of worked really well in the end, but it did take me a while. Now I'm just getting this rid of because I didn't want this anymore. There's still a column there, but I come back and delete that later. I ended up putting different flooring down in the kitchen there because I felt it fitted quite well. And I sort of think it was sort of like a marble slate. It's more slate than marble, I guess. Now I was trying to work out the wall colour to essentially do the dining room. And I did want to do a different one than that was in the kitchen. Well, I thought I did, and I was experimenting quite a lot because that's what I was having trouble with because I didn't really like how it was sort of one wall colour and then there was a strict line and then another. So I was experimenting a lot, and I really like this. So once again, it was from Spa Day. So if you have Spa Day, you do want to download, or you don't have Spa Day, you do want to get that before downloading this house. Now I was trying to work out this the doorway into the... Um, this is the lounge where this one goes. And I always think about our lounge, and it's always nice to essentially be able to close the doors to the lounge room because then it's not like it keeps the heat in and stuff. So that's why I ended up putting double doors in there because I felt it sort of fitted quite well. Now I was once again, I was experimenting with different floors and stuff and I think in the end yeah I, oh do I keep the timber I can't remember I think I do keep the timber whoops I keep the timber throughout the whole space and then I put a rug on the ground I think that's what I end up doing and then I thought do I get rid of that half wall I spent a lot of time the reason I kept that half wall though because I felt it sort of created a nice circulation so when you enter you go either straight into the dining room or you can walk down into the rest of the house and you can see I'm experimenting with the dining table now I was just trying to work out the best way to fit it into the space so Sims would be able to walk around it and stuff. In The Sims 4, they don't really have that much trouble anymore. In The Sims 1, there was like a one-by-one -one hallway, and they'd be like, Ah, je ne peux du, balupu, ah, fajou. But yes, that was me speaking Simlish. Impressive, isn't it? I spent quite a bit of time trying to find the right chairs, but I found these ones in the end, and I felt they looked good with the table. For the timber of the table, I ended up choosing quite a dark timber. I felt it looked nice. <laughs> Match the windows. I added a fireplace in it and there's that column, but for some reason I didn't notice the column then. I considered moving that, but nope, I left it. Those little shelves. I put candles above the fireplace, I think, in the end. Just adding some pictures in and stuff. And I was looking for particular pictures here. There were the glass ones, and I did this in one of my other houses, and I really liked how they looked. Now, I wanted to have, like, a bookcase here, and I thought, could I do a wall of bookcases? And I'm like, no, nah, it's not really necessary. I was originally in this space going to also incorporate a chess set table, but I didn't in the end. But I might end up putting it in if I use this house in a Let's Play. So you can see there I'm adding in some rugging. Rugging. <laughs> I was trying to find a nice chair. And that chair that I've ended up putting in, I believe... Wait, is it from... I think it's from the... Oh, I'm not sure. I thought it was from the um, outdoor... Uh, one of the outdoor ones. Well, the backyard ones, I don't know. But I think it's actually from a different one. Anyway, I was looking for a side table now to put in the corner. That's like a little reading nook in the corner. And I thought that looked really nice. And ended up putting a little table there. And I think I put a lamp in the corner. And I really like these space pictures, so I put them there. And yes, I liked how it looked. I wanted to then put lighting in, and I spent quite a bit of time fiddling with different types of lights. There was this round one, yeah, that little bubble one, but I didn't like that in the end. I kept on looking, I'm like, eh. They looked too, I don't know, they weren't very fitting for the type of house it was. And I ended up choosing these ones, and I kept them throughout the whole house. I was just positioning them correctly, because I hate it when lights aren't positioned. Now, I was looking for curtains, and this was something that I was quite shocked. There's not very many decent curtains in this game yet. They should put some more, like... Simple curtains with a variety of simple textures and beds are the same. There's really not very many good beds in the game at this point in time. Anyway, you can see here I'm experimenting with different blinds and stuff and I end up going back to the timber ones that I had before. 
these ones. I end up sticking with them throughout the house. I took them off that window. Okay. Now I'm moving that window. I centered that in the room because I thought it looked better internally anyhow. This is like the family room. So I don't know. In Australia, we call it the family room. It might be called different overseas. But this is like the space where you... The family spends most of the time, even though it's a one-person house. The family is like... The whole house is a family room. No, the whole house is a bedroom. I don't know. Anyway, I was just putting some pictures in. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put couches in that room or like a little table and chairs. And I think I do end up chucking in tables and chairs. By the way, when downloading this, I've never had trouble myself before. But um, you might like to have move objects on turned on. Phoebe dot move objects on just in case things move around because I don't want you to like see the house not in all its glory if that makes sense so I ended up putting just a simple table in there with two little chairs and I put a black rug on the ground that I make large and I felt that sort of made the space I'm just chucking the lights in now and I do put a couple of warm lights in just to light up the hallway Anyway, so I think, what am I doing here? That's right, I, this is when I put the lamp in that space. Because I'm like, I want a lamp there. If they're going to read, they need a lamp. And it was hard because I was trying to find a nice lamp that I felt was fitting, but I didn't want to block those pictures. And then I'm like, no, I'll just leave it there. There I put the little wall lamps on. They're little square ones with rectangles coming off because, like, yeah. And I'm just putting some more doors and stuff in. And I put a wardrobe in, you can see in the bedroom there, but we'll come back to that. Now I'm working on the two little bathrooms. So just to give you a little bit of perspective, and it was something one of my tutors taught me when I was studying, and she, I remember I designed a toilet. Well, I, yeah, I put in a bathroom, like a toilet. It was just a toilet, and it led right into, like, the family, like, dining room. And she's like, well, think about it. You probably wouldn't want that because who wants to go to the bathroom and know that, like, everyone could possibly be hearing them or you don't want bad smells and stuff. So she said, create another little room and use it as, like, an airlock. And that's essentially what I've done here. And I think it does work quite well. It might sort of seem like a little bit too much, but I actually quite like how this space turned out. And I end up reflecting this in the bathroom, like the ensuite on the um, opposing side of the house. This is the lounge room. So I was just adding in the little blinds again and I was trying to work out wall colour and stuff like that. I felt at this point in time I'd sort of like, I'd spent so much time working on it because I finished, I was doing all this part today and I was like, what do I do next, next, next? What was I looking for? Oh, I was seeing if I needed to change the floor, but I ended up liking the concrete. Now I was trying to work out the best spot for a TV and I'm like, that will fit perfectly there. They need more lounges as well. I don't know, they just need more of everything, but that will come with the expansion pack. I used the overhead things that you see in the kitchen. They're actually what's creating that TV cabinet, which I really liked. And I've seen that in houses that I've downloaded from the gallery before and stuff. So that's why I did that. Now I was just trying to pick a wall color for this room. What did I end up choosing? Yes, I think that's what I end up sticking with. And I placed the slate on the ground. So this is a quite a simple space, but I felt for what it was, it only needed to be because it's essentially where you'd go just to hang out and chill and watch some TV and stuff like that. I'm just putting the lights in the lounge. This is the bedroom now and the ensuite. So I'm start off, I think, with the ensuite first. And I chose the same objects that I placed in my other little toilet and hand washing nook. That doesn't make sense. But anyway, I'm just sort of trying to work out if I want a bath shower or just a shower. And I thought I'd just put a shower in. I'm not a fan of those bath showers. I feel if you're not going to have a proper bath and a proper shower, just have one. And I'll choose a shower over a bath shower or just a bath because bath... Then you have to fill it up and it always takes longer and you couldn't have a quick bath in the morning, but showers you can and like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, now I'm just adding flooring and I think I put a grayish carpet, yeah, on the bedroom because I wanted to put carpet somewhere in the house. And I end up grabbing one of these beds. I, I don't know. I felt the bed, the colouring of the bed was really limiting and I didn't like that. But anyway, I'm just chucking some little side tables in. I, I, hmm, I would say the bedroom and the lounge room could possibly do with further interior, like the space could be designed possibly a little bit better, but overall I quite like it. It's just minimalistic. I just add a simple rug in and I sort of put it under so it falls under the corner of the bed. This is when I've gone back now and I'm adding in that computer and I chuck, I was like, what could I put on the computer desk? And there was like a tin of pencils, but it had crap in it. And I'm like, let's put tissues. Now I think I go onto the patio and I use some stuff from, what, what is that? The backyard one, I can't remember. The one that came with the hot tubs. Anyway, I use some of the, the content from that to essentially make quite a nice exterior space. And I was really happy with how that turned out. And I do end up putting a barbecue out there. So if your Sims had a party, they could definitely have a nice night in the backyard. That was just me acting weird. Just adding some exterior lights out on the patio and some lights that shine up. So I was just testing that. I quite liked how that looked. 
I was just throwing, that's when I, did you see I got rid of those little round fountains and this is when I go in and grab them like llamas? No. And then I'm like, no, I'll put in the plants. And I put the little flower bushes. Something that we're doing here is essentially I'm grabbing a bunch of plants because I really love clumping plants together in The Sims. I think it can look really cool. Anyhow, so you can see I'm grabbing a bunch of plants and popping them in there. And yeah, I really loved how that looked. I was trying to work out what I would do next and how to do this sort of Squarespace, but I quite liked how that ended up forming around the entry point to sort of lead up to the house. Just doing some tracing. You can see here, I was talking to my brother about this. He was watching me as I filmed this and he's like, you really spent time putting that on? I'm like, the detail. And the reason I'm doing this is because it sort of makes like, because grass wouldn't go flush up against a house. So it gives it sort of a realistic thing. James from The Sim Supply was talking about it and that's where... I took inspiration from there, but he said someone else inspired him, so I guess that falls around the chain. I'm like, let's put some ornamental rocks at the front of the house, why not? And I end up putting a couple of blue little flower bushes there. I think they're blue, I think they're light blue or whatever. So jumping into screenshots now, we have Modern Elegance, that's what I've named it, and I've uploaded it to The Sims 4 Gallery, so you can download it into your game if you would like for free. My username is I'm the Pierce, so just search for that and you will find it. Anyway, I'm really happy with how the house turned out. I think using the 4x4 grid really sort of helped the house evolve from where I sort of started off. And the earthy colours really give it a cosy feeling, even with all the sort of the large windows that it has on all of the sides. <laughs> anyway, check out all the links below. You'll be able to find a link to the house as well in the gallery. And to my other things such as Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all that sort of jazz. But guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe so you can check out more of my house building videos and let's plays that are going to start off soon. And I will see you guys later. I hope you have a wonderful day. And this is my favorite screenshot because I think it looks awesome. I'll see you guys later. Bye.